Welcome to the house of our father. We belong to the same father. That's why we are in this house this afternoon because you know our father has a word for us. My name is Beatrice Waithaka and I'm born again this afternoon. I am a member of this church and I love the Lord so, so much because he loved me before I loved him or before I came to know myself. And this afternoon, I want to bring forth the word of God. And I want to read from the book of Philippians 4, verse number 9. Philippians 4, verse number 9. The Bible says, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we want to break the bread of life. And because you know you never gather your people in vain, we are gathered in this place called by your name. And our prayer is one that speak to us, dear Lord, at our level and in a language we can understand that after leaving this place, we are not live the way we came. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The topic of my message this afternoon is Father's Advice. Father's Advice. This was a letter written by Paul to the Church of Philippians. And he said four things. The things which you have both learned, received, and had and seen in me, do them. And I don't know what you have heard from your father, what you have received from your father, what you have seen from your father. Things that you are doing in this great young life, are they from your father? Have you received them from your father? Have you heard them from your father? Have you seen them from your father? And Paul is challenging us this afternoon that you ought to live a life that people can look at us and admire the heaven that we are going. Paul's doctrine and life were of a peace. It was one peace plus another that made Paul to be what he was. What they saw in him was the same thing with the word they had from him. Paul said he's born again. When you look at the life of Paul, what he said is what he lived. And that is what the, Lord, what, what the Lord wants from us this afternoon. That Paul never lived a double standard life. That his private life and his public life were all the same. You've met Paul at night, met during the day, he remains to be the same Paul. He could propose himself as well as his doctrine to their imitation. And that's what Paul said, that imitate me as I imitate Christ. Because he knew that the life he was living was nothing else but Christ. It gives a great force to what we say to others when we can appeal to what they have seen in us. You preach to somebody, try to bring somebody to, to, to salvation. But when they look at your life, what you are speaking and what you are, they are completely different. And Paul is telling us this afternoon, because Paul wrote this letter when he was in prison. He wrote this letter to Timothy, his son. And that's why he called it the father's advice. And because when you got born again, you were given restrictions. You were given boundaries. Are you still maintaining those boundaries? And this is the way to have the God of peace with us. When you do these things, which you have heard, you have seen, you have received, <clears throat> and you have learned, the God of peace will be your friend. We miss peace because of our lives. We miss peace because of the kind of life that you are living. Because it is not portraying the, the one who is in us. The Lord is with us while we are with him. If you are in the Lord, my brother, my sister, the Lord will purposefully learn, learn to, to, to be in you. And this is the way we have to keep close to our duty to him. You want to serve the Lord. But there are some things in your life that do not 
They, they do not go together with salvation. And now you are, you are in a fight. You want to please your flesh. You want to please the, the spirit. It is high time you listen to the father's advice. Paul balances four activities. What he, he balances learned and received. You learned, you received. And you heard and you seen. And Paul lived these four things in his life. And you know, most of us knows the kind of life Paul lived. No wonder the Lord sent Paul to the church of Philippians because they knew his background. He knew who he was before he came to know Jesus Christ. And I know even you, we all have a history of where we came from. And the Lord is saying, can your life know that you are in me? Can I send you to your people and go and tell them that there is salvation? Because you are testimony that I am able to save and sustain. When I saw a CFIWE, it is one thing to learn a truth, but quite another to receive it inwardly and make it part of our inner man. What you portray inside is supposed to be what the inner man is speaking. Because our private life is very good. What about our public life? If I come to the office where you work or where you have a business and ask for a born again brother or a sister, will people lead me to you? How is your private life and your public life? Facts in the head are not enough. We must also have truths in the heart. And you know what the Bible says? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Not out of the abundance of the head. Because the head has nothing. Out of the abundance of the heart, the Lord speaketh. The mouth speaketh. What are you speaking this afternoon? You speak what is in your heart. Paul's ministry... He not only taught the word, but also lived it so that his learners could see the truth in his life. Friends, Paul, when he was called Saul, when Paul was converted to Saul, when Paul was, Saul was converted to Paul, he took a 360 degrees turn around. Paul never looked back where he came from. He knew. He was so aggressive in the other world. The same aggressiveness, he came to it into the kingdom. In my prayer, for you and for me. Are you aggressive? Yes, you used to do this, this, and that. Are you aggressive in this kingdom? Because the Lord wants that same aggressiveness that you had in the other world. You bring it into this world by bringing souls into the kingdom. I want to look at three truths concerning Paul's heart. And we'll be done. Number one, fathers establish patterns. Fathers establish patterns. And as I said, Paul was a father. And that's what the Lord sent him to Philippi. So that he can be a father to these people. Because they knew where he came. Paul was a testimony. They knew there is a God who can save and sustain. If this is Paul. That is the kind of testimony. So fathers established patterns. Paul declares to the Philippians to model themselves after his example. Can you have the guts to tell somebody, imitate me as I imitate Christ? Or come after me? But you normally tell people, do as I say, not as I do. This was one of the many churches that Paul was the, the apostle over. Essentially, God gave Paul the mandate to father this church. Can you imagine? God gave Paul the mandate to father because he knew that in Paul there was nothing, nothing, nothing that was contrary to salvation. Paul was born again inside out until the Lord gave him a mandate. Paul had no family. Paul had no family. But the Lord gave him a mandate to go and father, be a father in the church of Philippians. God set Paul as a, an example for the people to model themselves after him. But if Paul had the guts to tell them, imitate me. As I imitate who? Not my church. As I imitate Christ. As Christians, we are to follow Christ. Although we are Christ followers, God sets up pastors who are after his heart and sets them in place for his flocks to follow. Yes, you can hear the Lord. But in this earth, the Lord has said, Paul's. I am a Paul, 
Pastor Brian is a Paul. Pastor Millicent is a Paul. Pastor Kaunda is a Paul. Pastor Kibera is a Paul. We are the pastors. Please, this is my plea. You cannot lead yourself. You need a pastor. You need a father who can speak to your life. You need a mentor who can mentor you. But this was a few. Who is feeding you? You have so many gardens that you are eating from. Where do you belong? Where do you belong? Who is your father? Do you have a father? Yes, God is our father. He is our example. And he gives us pastors on earth. Who can father us and lead us as God leads them? We are led by, by, our, by God our father. And then we are supposed to lead you so that you can give an account of your life. But some of you are so slippery. Umeshika hivi, una Teresa. Ukiangalia ata uko, mkono yuko peke yake. What do the pastors say? These four words, Paul said, what you have learned, what you have heard, what you have received, and what you have seen, indicate that Paul was a present and active father who divided the word of God, fed, and taught his flock in wisdom. Yes, the way you receive the word is not the way you receive the word because there is an anointing upon me. So what the Lord does, he gives him the word and gives him the grace to... to, to, to to put this word in manageable pieces. Therefore, I can teach the new believers. I can teach the couples, depending with their ears, and depending with their age, and depending with their level of maturity. But you cannot. So my prayer is, have a father. And be under somebody. Learn to be taught. Paul said, these four things, please learn from him. In the book of Philippians 3.17, Paul said, keep on imitating me. It is not a one day thing. You keep on, keep on imitating me. My brothers and sisters, pay attention to those who follow the right example that we have set for you. If you don't follow this phrase, that's why people have gone into cults. Who told you you can sweep the enemy? said, keep on. It's not a one day thing. It's a work in progress. Keep on imitating me. Even when he's gone, you keep on imitating Paul. Fathers establish the blueprints. Fathers establish the generational pattern. If you are blessed for being under a father, believe you me, even your generation will be blessed. But these fathers, they can either establish a pattern of blessing through their disobedience or, establish, or through obedience or, des, or establish generational circles of curses through their disobedience. Friends, you can just tell when this man of God is deviating from the truth. But you know for us, we have a lot of faith that even when they are deviating, you are still following. We have the discernment spirit. Number two, who has your ear? Who has your ear? Ninani ako na sikiorako. Iyo dweki swahiri. Who has your ear? Where is your ear? Yes, where is your ear? I know everybody has. Do you have an ear? Where is your ear? Wengine hawana. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 22. James 1.22, the Bible says, do not deceive yourselves by just listening to his word. Instead, put it into practice. What you have heard, put it into a practice. Friends, if today you could hear a sermon every day of the week, we come here Monday through to Sunday, and we hear a sermon. And this sermon, the preacher is an angel from heaven. Are we together? You come here Monday up to Sunday. Those are seven days in a week. And every day you hear a sermon. And the speaker or the preacher of this word 
is uh, an angel. Yet, if we rested in a bare hearing, it would never bring us to heaven. Ata malaika kija hapa ahubiri. Wacha mimi. Wacha pasa Brian. Wacha pasa Millicent. Ni malaika mekuja hapa akona wings. See, that's why we have never seen an angel. Amo shaona malaika. But we believe angels have wings. Akuja hapa peperusha mabawa. Ahubiri neno. Mandi through to Sunday. And you don't put it in practice. It cannot take you to heaven. What will take you to heaven is the word that you put into practice. And that's what Paul said. What you have learned, what you have heard, what you have received, what you have seen, do. That was the final word. When you do it, the God of peace will be with you. In the book of Proverbs 1 verse number 8. Proverbs 1 8. The Bible says, my child, listen when your father corrects you. That is the past of a father. To do what? To correct you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. So what does, do fathers do? Fathers correct children. What about mothers? They give instruction. Do not neglect mother's instruction. And listen when you are corrected. You are corrected in this church. Unahama. Unenda kanisa ingine. Iyo kanisa nirikemewa. Friends, what Paul says that open rebuke is better than hidden love. But you are, you are not rebuked. You are corrected. I don't know how you took it. Now, kind of church in Guinea. How many churches would you go in one year? Unanda the same tabia. Unanda na yoka in Kanisa. You are corrected. Unasema ni rikemewa. You go another church. One year. How many churches have you become a member? If Jesus was to come here today and ask you to give a record or a history of how many churches you've been a member in one year. There are more than 12. Therefore, in every month, you are a member of two churches. Agree to be corrected. Hear, learn, glean, and digest the instructions of those who God has entrusted over your life, you over your soul. You cannot feed yourself. In where I come from, we normally say, you cannot shepherd yourself. Those who know where I come from, now you, I know you, you are putting the words together. You cannot shepherd yourself. You need a shepherd. The mantle and responsibility of a father is weighty. Weighty than the mother. Because words from a father makes your life. Fathers give an account to God as to how they steward over your soul and are accountable to him. You are not your own. You belong to Jesus. And as much as you belong to Jesus, there is somebody who is upon you to give an account of your life. When God says a pastor over you, to feed you and to father you, their voice and heart should reflect the father. And this is the voice of God. For you who come from this church, who are members of this church, we have the father's vision. People may, ought to think that the father's vision is about our, our bishop. When we talk about the father's heart, you think it's about our bishop. No, it's about our God's heart and the vision of our father. The father, and I think you should choose. <laughs> the voice of a father and heart should reflect the God, the father and the voice of our God. I've said that. Therefore, choose to follow God and not the voice of a stranger. People have gone to cult because we don't know this person. You saw him on TV and kuna namba hapo ukapiga and you're connected. Choose not to follow the voice of a stranger. In the book of Psalms 23, verse number 4, 23, verse number 4, David said, Even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid, Lord, for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. Your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. Fathers are positioned to correct 
to rebuke you. The shepherd's rod was used to correct animals in the flock. And that strayed away from the fold. Many of us have come from up country and used to, to watch over cows and goats and take them to the, to the river to take water. Oy. The shepherd's staff had an open hook on the end which was used to hook an animal back in line with a flock. This is how God corrects us. He still have a rod. And you go astray, he only resists the, 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 the rod at your back, nana kuvruta. But because he doesn't want to miss you and he loves you. But you know what to do? Unatoa yo. Just as Joseph removed the coat, unatoa yo koti, and then you take off. But the Lord loves us so much. He doesn't want to lose you. Let the word of God correct you. Let God pull you back to him. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter how many times you have fallen. The Lord is saying, I am here to bring you back to the fold because you cannot shepherd yourself. And outside there, so many enemies are waiting for your soul. Therefore, come back to the fold that I can be your shepherd. And finally, number three. Paul is warning the Philippians about a stranger's voice. A stranger's voice. In the book of John 10, verse number 5, John 10, 5, the Bible says, they will not follow someone else. Instead, they will run away from such a person because they do not know his voice. Do you know the voice of your shepherd? Do you know the voice of your father? Do you, can you recognize, even if there's, if there's, no sun, there, there's no light, that is the voice of my father. Can you recognize his voice? Good men are fitly compared to sheep. Good men. Are you a good man? Then you qualify to be a sheep in the flock. Men are creatures, depending on the creator, are called the sheep of his pasture. When the Lord addresses us, he says, the sheep of my pasture. And my prayer is, you live in the fold so that the Lord can take care of you. The Lord can shepherd you. It's him who knows where there is green grass and there's still waters. You cannot shepherd yourself. The church of God in the world is a sheep fold into which the children of God that were scattered abroad are gathered together. We meet here. Because we were scattered abroad. But when we come here, we are under a cover. We are under our bishop. We are under the pastors. So that they can, they, they can take us through this journey of faith. Because they know where there is green grass and where there is green, there, there are still waters. Learn to sit still. Pray and hear God's voice. So that you do not follow a stranger. You may follow a butcher thinking you are fo following the, the shepherd. Many have fallen into the hands of butchers and they have been killed. My prayer is sit still and hear from the Lord and you will never miss the way. Let the Father's word guide your heart and lead you. Let his word penetrate the soul of, the soil of your heart and cover every area that is not like him. Imagine, he's going to cover every area that is not like him. His word both Rema and Logos. Rema word is the one that you read and it was revealed. And Logos, the, one that, the, the, the word that, that you put into practical, that is the Logos, the revealed and written word of God. It breaks generational curses, bondages, and cycles, and establishes blessings and godly generational patterns. You want all this to happen in your life? that you are blessed with your generations, learn to hear the voice of the Lord. Learn to hear the voice of the shepherd. Because the voice of a stranger will take you nowhere. Furthermore, it will destroy you. Because even the enemy is here. Two for people that he can perish with. His word is your weapon against the tactics of the enemy. Remember, Jesus overcame in the wilderness. He came, overcame Satan by saying, it is written. He didn't tell me, I'm a son of God, or I came from heaven, and I have found authority. He said, it is written. Do you have a treasure in your heart? Do you know what the word says concerning you? Do you have the, know the plans the Lord has concerning you? Only one thing, just know the word. You cannot meditate on a hurry. No, have time, sit still, and know 
what the word says. Have time to go through the word of God. From creation to creation, the Lord remains the same. There's no other word he's going to create. This is the only word. But you can stand out in this word because of the word of God. Choose to follow his word, his voice, and reflect his heart and you know to go astray. It is not a one day, but ongoing. And that's what Paul said. Keep putting into practice every day when you wake up in the morning and have the breath of life. Put the word of God in you. The revealed word, the received word, the seen word. And the learned word. Because this is what will make you to stand. Nobody is with you from morning to evening. It is only you who can watch over yourself where you can. I am not with you because when you leave this place in the evening, who knows? Who knows? Knowing very well that you are born again, but your behavior is contrary to what the word of the Lord says. Therefore, Paul emphasized to the, to the church of Philippians that what you have seen from me, what you have heard from me, and what you have received from me and seen from me, please do it. And after doing it, there is a reward that the God of peace will have a place in your heart now and forevermore. Let's pray. Maybe you're in this place. The beginning point is for you to know Jesus Christ so that you can know he can reveal yourself. You can receive him. You can learn from him. And you can see him in your life. And maybe you are here, you're not born again. That is the starting point. You cannot, he cannot reveal to you. When you're in the other kingdom, you must come into his kingdom. He cannot be your shepherd when you're in somebody else's kingdom. You have to come this other side so that he can make you, he can be your, your, your shepherd and bring you to the sheepfold so that day in, day out, during the night, during the day, he can be your shepherd. Maybe you are here. You're not born again. The Lord is saying, I need you. The sheepfold is not full. There's still space for you. You are here. You're not born again. If you could love to give your life to Jesus, just lift your hand and I'm going to pray with you. And maybe you are here. You are going through a very hard time and you're telling the Lord, come and see me through. What I'm going through now, I need you. I need you hand. I need an extra effort because for me, I feel as if I've drained everything that I had. Are you there? You need the prayers. Stand on your feet. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we came through these doors with one expectation that you are going to meet us at our very point of need. And Abba Father, you know that you are as different. We have different needs as our names. I want to lift my sister and my brother to you. You know, dear Father, what they want from you. You know, King of all the glory, what they desire. And only you, dear Father, can make a way where there seems to be no way. From this place, dear Father, follow your word, King of all the glory, and meet them at the very point of their need. Because I know, Jehovah Father, in you there is no lack. That's why you say, we come unto you, all you that are heavy laden, and you're going to give us rest. We are bringing our burdens unto you. Come and lift them to your Father and give us rest in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak a week with a difference to my sister and my brother. And I speak open doors this week to my sister and my brother because they came to you and to you to your father. They never serve a shame. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.